Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for all your support. I love y'all, but today we're gonna to be getting into something to do with my dead air suppressor here. So I've had this suppressor again for about six, seven months, 800-ish 800, 800 rounds through it. But one of the things I bought is a, a end cap and it finally arrived today. This is this, the factory end cap. And then here is the end cap in all its glory of the packaging and things of that nature. So just kind of an up close, the packaging is just basic nonsense. Just a Ziploc baggie here. Let's go ahead and pull it out. I'll show y'all what we're looking at here and kind of compare and contrast the difference stock in cap and flash hider 556 in cap it took me a good while to find one in stock if i were you if i could do it all over again while i was waiting on my suppressor i should have already had these one of these at my house and then i could have just threw it on there as soon as i got it because if you wait you're going to be looking around for one of these for quite some time 556 30 cal and the actual protruding metal here that's actually the flash hider portion of this whereas the other one you just have nothing it's just recessed and this is what it looks like not too much of a difference here same exact concept if you watched my previous video on my dead air suppressor i posted some pictures down below where the different in caps you can actually get so you can get a flash hider version 556 you can get a 30 cal version flash hider you can get just normal 556 in cap and those are all going to vary in price this one right here cost me 90, 90 some odd dollars and I got it from Omaha Outdoors. They only had one in stock. I saw, immediately saw it and I grabbed it up and then now they're completely out of stock. So again, Omaha Outdoors, 90-ish dollars. I got on Dead Air's website here just to kind of see what they were selling them for. This Flash Hider 556 in cap, they're going to sell for $99, but they don't even have any in stock, which completely blows my mind that they have all the support for the chemo mount. They have all the support for muzzle devices and things like that. But when you go to your local gun shop and look at their wall, they don't have any of these on the wall, at least in my area and on the internet. So it's kind of crazy to me that they don't have them in stock, but $90, $99 on their website. They really don't give too much information about this end cap right here. It literally says in the product description that it effectively reduces your muzzle flash with 50 to 75 percent you can take that for what it's worth i trust dead air dead air is a solid company but to me <clears throat> just that little bit of protrude metal right here i don't know about 50 to 75 percent i think it's going to be varied off of your barrel length and what kind of setup you actually have running this on so i'm curious to find out i didn't really buy it for the fact that hey it's going to reduce muzzle flash or they also say one to five decibel reduction or something crazy like that. I bought it because it makes me feel a lot better about actually running a dedicated 556 five, can. I can at least kind of say that now, even though it's still a 30 cal can, but I changed the end cap up. So if y'all don't really know, this is my host for my suppressor. It's a Daniel Defense Mark 18. I've talked about this in plenty of other videos, so I'm not really gonna get in, in depth with that. If you all would please go over and, and check out those videos and like and comment, I'd really appreciate you. But this is the setup that my can has been on since I got it. I bought it specifically for this weapon system. When I was trying to figure out how to get the end cap off, I was very curious and very, very, skeptical because I didn't want to damage my suppressor. This suppressor, you know, it took me a while to get and it's not just something I can buy off the shelf. So if I damage it or break it, I'm going to have to contact that air, send it to them, see if they're even going to do anything with it and then give it back to me. So I didn't see any videos on, you know, how to do it, but I did stumble upon some forums. And a lot of those guys were saying, hey, you need the actual jig and I'll post a picture down here to actually remove it. And I was worried that I didn't have it and I wasn't going to be able to get it off but 
I just went full send and I tried a different method. Some of those guys were also saying that they were actually putting their suppressor in advice and they were actually heating it up with a torch, which to me sounds a little sketchy. I don't want to damage this or, you know, anything of that nature. Uh, then there were some guys on there saying to put a 30 round magazine through the suppressor and then you're going to be able to get the end cap off a lot easier. But then again, I can't just walk out of my apartment and blow off 30 rounds and do some yard pops. I'm pretty sure my neighbors wouldn't be very happy about that. So I just went full send and basically how I got it off is I got two DeWalt punches here. Nothing fancy about them. They're kind of bigger than your average punch and they're tapered. So if you can't tell, if you look at the suppressor, there's these indentations here. And basically I just stuck that in there, one on each side and I rotated the end cap off. The only thing is I don't have a vise or any way to kind of secure this, so it was kind of hard. So basically what I did was I <coughs> removed my lower receiver from my upper receiver, removed the bolt carrier group, removed the charging handle, and I was actually able to put it in between my legs essentially and with the suppressor on there. And I was actually able to undo it just like that to get the suppressor off and it worked just fine. The only problems that I had with it was, if you look at the end cap itself, these threads that it comes with, they get caked up with carbon and that's why it's so hard to get off. If you can actually see the threads get caked up with carbon. So what was happening is as I was turning it with these punches, I could turn it a little bit and then I'd meet a lot of resistance. Then I could turn it a little bit more and I meet a lot of resistance because that carbon was actually getting kind of caked up in those threads. But then I eventually got to a point where I could pretty much put my two fingers on it and rotate it off and it came off fine. I then took a wire brush, cleaned up all my threads. And if you actually look inside the suppressor, there is threads in here too. I took a miniature wire brush, cleaned that out, and now I'm good to go. So if you're kind of hesitant on, do you need the, the dead air jig? I don't believe you do. Um, I would just be very, very delicate. If you meet some resistance, slow down, don't break your can and you should be able to get it off. But that was the method I used, just two punches and I rotated them and it came off. <clears throat> With this new end cap, it's the same, same setup, same nonsense. You just pretty much line up the threads and then throw it on there. I'm going to hand tighten it now for just the video purpose. I'll get down in there and figure out what spec it needs to actually, you know, attach because I'm not trying to shoot this end cap off. That took me forever to find one. So in all its glory, this is what it looks like on the can. It's got a little bit of protruding metal here for flash suppression. And I just think overall it looks pretty fucking dope. So really curious to see if this makes a difference. Again, they say it has a few decibel reductions that you can get out of your, your can. I don't have a decibel reader, so I'm just gonna have to play it and see if I can tell anything from the ear, which I highly doubt I can. So we'll take it to the range in the upcoming weeks and see what it looks like, see what it feels like. And unfortunately, I don't have a place where I can shoot at night, so it's gonna be really hard to you know, determine the, what kind of flash I get out of it as opposed to this one to this one. So if I ever get the chance, I'm definitely going out at night just to kind of test these end caps. But I think at the end of the day, it looks more aesthetically pleasing. I can kind of say, hey, it's a dedicated can now because it's a 5.56 end cap. And I'm just really excited to finally get one. I really appreciate you all for watching my videos, supporting me. I've met a lot of really cool people on here people that DM me on my Instagram. If you don't know, I have an Instagram. I just kind of started it up a couple months ago. OED Arms, just search it on Instagram. You'll be able to find it. I met a lot of really cool people on there, DMing me, talking about things, asking for things, getting a lot of advice from them as well. Um, it's just been an awesome, awesome time and I truly appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. Peace.